Hey folks, good evening and welcome to another episode of Fans of Monsters Radio where we explore the strange and the unexplained. I'm your host, Lon Stricker, and thanks for joining me. Now, if you enjoy our content, please subscribe, like, and share our presentations. And uh, please feel free to comment as well. Super Chat is active during the show, so please uh, share your support, Fans of Monsters Radio, by clicking the dollar icon under the chat. And uh, you can also support the channel by clicking the uh, Super Thanks icon or buy me a coffee link. Your consideration is very much needed and appreciated. So tonight I've got two of my favorite guys on here tonight, and I've known these gentlemen now for quite a while. We've exchanged a lot of uh, a lot of stories, a lot of a lot of investigations, and they've got a great radio show as well. So Kyle Filson was born in uh, Fort Worth, Texas. His mother and father were lifelong residents of New Jersey and moved south only a few years before his birth to seek a better living. Uh, growing up in rural Texas in a small town outside of the Dallas Fort Worth. Metroplex, uh, Kyle spent a lot of his time in the woods hunting, fishing, and camping. His father and uncles first sparked his early interest in the paranormal, watching shows like Unsolved Mystery and Search of, along with reading numerous books by John Keel, Ivan T. Sanderson. Kyle became fascinated with UFOs, Bigfoot, time slips, and parallel universes. Keeping an open mind and exploring these topics, he strives to present these stories and experiences shared by only a few in a, in a fun and lighthearted way. And Kyle currently lives in Texas with his wife and three sons. So Cam Hale was born and raised in Texas and comes from a long family heritage of Texans that can be traced back to before the Lone Star State gained its independence. And growing up in the rural country town, he spent the majority of his time outdoors. Receiving his first tape, taste of archery at the age of five, he started down a path that led him into solo camping and hunting trips across the state, as well as many other states. Like most, his fascination with the strange and unusual started young with shows like Search of and Unsolved Mysteries, diving deeper into these subjects at his local library only fueled the flames that led to him to where he is today. And with an open mind and adventurous heart, Cam looks to present the stories of the strange in a fun and intriguing manner. So Cam still lives in the great state of Texas with his wife and two children. And the show has expanded uh, perspectives. If you do get a chance to, to look at it sometime, please do. It's a great show. So guys, thanks for coming on tonight. Man, thank you. Thanks, man. man. Glad to be here. You know, we correspond a lot, but I haven't had you on in about two years. That's right. Uh, yeah. And it, I, I know it, the scheduling is a bear. So that, you know, that's the biggest problem. <laughs> but I know you guys are busy on Friday nights. So uh, we started doing some Wednesdays. So that's what we got you on. Yes. So, um, yeah. So what's been going on lately? What you guys been looking into? You know, I know you guys get in, in these tangents with, with certain subjects. Uh, just like you did with the Glimmer Man years ago, and that kind of went mainstream. Uh, what's some of what people are talking about nowadays? Crawlers. Oh, the we, crawlers? Oh, the okay. pale crawlers, man. We've been getting a lot of stuff sent to us. about. We still get the Glimmer Man stuff, but we've been getting a lot of stuff sent to us about the pale crawlers recently, like within the last few months. And it's one of those things. I don't know... It's like Kyle and I was discussing, like they bring up the rake and the history of the rake. They try to trace back to creepy pasta. But then we start seeing these things where people are reporting like, no, nope, that's exactly what I saw or some resemblance to what was originally reported. So then it starts making you think, well, did it did it take that form or did this creepy pasta writing actually come from something, an experience someone had, something that was going on and that's what got it going? Or is it all thought forms? Is it the fact that everybody thinking and dwelling and seeing is what's created it? That's one of them that spiked up pretty good. And then we still get the Glimmer Man stuff. Right. Those still trickle in from time to time. And they're still just as unexplained. Like, I feel out of everything that we've all discussed, the Glimmer Man seems to be the thing that we absolutely know the least about. Like, it's <laughs> just almost like smoke. It just passes. And then that's it. Like, because there's they don't see anything. You see nothing. Exactly. You don't life. see really anything manifest. No. Yeah. It's weird. I um I've heard so many different stories about from people who have seen the, you know, the the glimmering effect, the uh, glass scene like effect, the predator effect. 
And uh, you and I were, t- we were talking about this before the show about, you know, the origins of the predator. And uh, tell us about that a bit. You, you, you mentioned something about Heineck's son being involved with this. Uh, yeah, apparently J. Allen Heineck's son uh, worked on the production set of the very first Predator movie. Really? So it has to make you wonder, you know, did his father, uh, you know, tell him something as a small child that he remembered that helped and that helped create that idea of what the Predator should look like when it's cloaking itself? Maybe it's just a coincidence. But, you know, there are sightings where sometimes people see glowing yellow eyes. There are sightings where that has glowing red eyes, and there's a lot of sightings where they don't see eyes at all. And like we were talking before we were on the air, when it comes to the Glimmer Man, I've heard all types of theories, whether it's in fact Bigfoot has the ability to cloak itself, it's in fact some type of top secret military camouflage system they've developed. I've even heard that it's extraterrestrials, just like the movie Predator, where it's camouflaging itself. I've Mm -hmm. heard that it's time travelers. And when you go back in time, it creates this shimmering or glimmering effect. And someone in the future can go back and explore what the world was like, say, in 2023. And But if people see you, that's what it looks like. And then I've heard the possibility that it's fey, that it start uh, it f- falls in line with a lot of early fairy encounters where a lot of people talk about that have the sightings of these gnomes or duendes or whatever name sprite whatever you want whatever they want to go by depends on the region in the world where these fey are encountered it's almost like the fey are shocked that you can see them and that's very similar to a lot of these glimmer man sightings i've read so many where somebody's out hunting someone's out just for a walk with their dog someone is just you know working outside and all of a sudden something catches their eye they look in the trees and they see this blurry looking silhouette of something that's shaped like a man it's not gigantic proportions most of the time it's the average size of an adult man like six foot Sometimes there's mm-hmm. sightings where they're larger, but sometimes I think people are a little freaked out. So, you know, they they think it's bigger, but, and then the, almost every time when the creature or whatever it is notices that you see it, it like freezes and then usually like tries to run away. I've mm-hmm. never had an encounter or I've never heard of an encounter where the thing is aggressive, where it tries to harm anyone. There was one sighting that was sent to us where a kid was playing in his backyard And didn't see it, but like ran into it and knocked down and it like picked him up and held him for a second, but it it didn't try to hurt him. Mm -hmm. So I don't, and a lot of the stories when it comes to fairy stories are the same way. People see these things and it's like the, the fae will be like, oh crap, you're not supposed to be able to see me. Why do you see me? And then they slink off into the woods and run away, you know? So it's kind of like that. I don't know. Perhaps it is extraterrestrial. Perhaps Bigfoot can clone itself. Perhaps Bigfoot's an extraterrestrial. I mean, there's no answers. But the sightings uh, are definitely increasing. I don't know if the volume of sightings are increasing or the reporting of them, but we've definitely, you know, five years ago, we would get one, two a year. Mm -hmm. And and then now I would say we we probably get 15, 20 a year now. Yeah, you guys have sent me a few really good ones over the years. And, um, I, I've gotten a few from other people, but it, it's and, and debris. Thanks for your uh, support. I very much appreciate it. And uh, I, I don't know. I there's got to be a nexus to this somehow. Um, you know, this is something about about a decade ago. Stan Gordon and I were talking because we we talk a lot about sightings here in Pennsylvania, and he started mentioning to me that. You know, he said, "Did you do you notice that people are starting to see these Bigfoot?" And he's talking about Bigfoot in particular, but seeing Bigfoot, and when they look at them, the Bigfoot looks back at them like they're surprised they're seeing them. Mm. You know, yeah. like they're shocked they're they're being seen, and they I mean they they make an extra effort to get out you know to take off somewhere, and uh, many times they just simply disappear, and. Um, I started I started thinking about it and you know of course this is about the time this glimmer man stuff started coming well it had it was before that but it, it, you know as time has gone on and if people have told me about their sightings of Bigfoot and where they just simp- simply seem to 
manifest from nowhere. I, you got to wonder, well, is, is, is this glimmer man effect something related to it? It, it does seem that way. I, yeah. I don't know if it's, it, it has, it has all the hallmarks of something that would go along with Bigfoot of mm -hmm. where it's pretty much for where it seemed aside from the few that we've gotten, like Kyle had talked about where they've been in people's bedrooms or in the middle of town and they catch something. The ones outdoors do have the hallmark of it, but it's also strange because we get reports of different sizes. You get some reported, nothing is massive. Like I don't remember us getting reports of any of them that are like eight, 10 foot tall massives. No, they all seem to be, five to six footers, which I guess could be juvenile. If you wanted to go that route, could be juvenile, could be something along those lines. It always makes me wonder how many we've gone walking past that nobody's ever seen because it only seems like they, they view them or they catch glimpses of them while they're moving, whether it's while they're following people or something along those lines of while they're tracking, watching, whatever, it's almost like they kind of accidentally give themselves away. Right. And that's whenever people start noticing them. So I wonder if that's whenever people are discussing things of feeling like someone's being watched in the woods, but they look around and there's nothing. Because it, unless you were glassing, unless you were setting up with some really good binoculars and you're watching the wood line and all that, to order to pick that out would be near impossible. If it wasn't moving, if it was laid down or sitting down or just back backlit, you know, with a lot of brush and blended in, it would be hard to see it without it moving. So it almost feels as if something is there simply to monitor us or just to watch us. And I don't know if that's alien. I don't know if it's Fay. What it is, it just it doesn't fit anything because, like we said, it. There's really no crazy interactions. There's not all the stories where you hear up where it's walking around tents as you get with Bigfoot or it's leaving handprints or it's taking things or banging on houses or all that. It's just on the periphery of interactions with people. Just mm -hmm. It just feels like they are voyeurs. They're just there to watch. And when you bring up the idea of like time travelers or something along those lines, it almost fits that too. That's what I said is it's my favorite because you can't, we can't grasp it. It truly is grabbing smoke. We, we, we love to categorize things. It helps us easy to understand it. That's the reason we put certain things in boxes of cryptids or fae or humanoid or however we want to break them down for our own personal benefit. This is humanoid shaped. That's pretty much all we got. Like that's as far as it goes. Now, I've never seen a report where someone said it was once there and then I saw it drop its cloak and there it was it was it was an alien or it was a bigfoot or it was whatever it's they seem to remain cloaked and of course they're easy i mean you you think about easy to lose if yeah, you went right. after it if you decided i got to go find out it runs around the corner 20 30 yards ahead of you steps off in the brush and stops well you're never going to see it again it's yeah. gone so it i i think most of the like sleddings that i've gotten from folks have been deer hunters that are up in tree stands and just have to incidentally see movement in in another tree and then they they start concentrating on it and they see it yeah and yeah. uh that you know it never manifests into anything other than you know that form so i don't know like you said maybe they are just watchers you know and this is another thing about the whole aspect of cryptids and such. It, it seems to me, and this is something that I've become more aware of since we've been working with the um, the Chicago sightings, is that I, I believe that these these beings allow themselves to be seen by certain people. Now, do they do they have some type of ability to do that? It, it seems that way because, you know, we've had sightings where there have been hundreds of people around and only a, a few people or one person even sees them. Uh, I, I I don't know. It, it, it is strange. I've often wondered when it comes to Glimmer Man and, and we'll get on with we'll get into the Chicago sightings, too. Right. But I've always wondered, if, like, with the Glimmer Man, are certain people more sensitive to see this thing like because mm -hmm. you hear the stories a lot with mediums and people that are sensitive that they have paranormal experiences their whole life like somehow they're more sensitive that's why they grow up they see ghosts they see things other people don't see so perhaps it's the same uh, i'm not saying that the glimmer man is picking them out it's just a coincidence when someone who is a little bit more sensitive they may not know that they are even they're the ones that's seeing this because you're right there are countless stories of 
people seeing things like we're in the Chicago area, the Batman, the flying winged humanoid. And you'll, it'll be lots of people around, but like only one person saw it. And they'll even mm-hmm. like tap their friend or whatever. Like, do you see that? And the person's like, I didn't see anything. And he's like, he was standing right there. Yeah. Yeah. The Chicago thing is wild because, you know, growing up as a kid, when you heard about the original Mothman, that was something that really blew my hair back, back when I had hair. It, it was, that was a long was time ago. That was very intriguing to me, right? The, the, the Mothman and you read about it and the, the, the harbinger of death and bad things to come. And now fast forward, I never knew as a teenager that I would be hosting a paranormal show, friends with other paranormal shows. And there's literally a Mothman like wave happening in, in my time, in real time. Yeah, there's a lot of people up there seeing this has been going on for what, like three or four years now. Eleven years. Eleven. See. You know, we started. You know, in 2011. Excuse me. 2011 was the first year where we really started getting a bunch of sightings together. It was three sightings in a three month period, and uh, then it kind of waned off until, of course, 2017. Then it just went absolutely nuts. I mean, that two, that two, that year 2017 was crazy. I was literally getting telephone calls 24 seven from people in Chicago, not people who were having sightings, but people who were worried about why are these sightings occurring? And I'd had to sit there on the phone and try to dispel people's fears. I mean, I'd say in July and August, 2017, I was just, all the time answering the phone middle of the night all the time because people were, were literally f- frightened you know they knew about the mothman and they knew the the harbinger theory and all that with the bridge and they thought well maybe some type of disaster is going to befall chicago and, and and people were really scared yeah i've heard people say you know before 2020 that that was the precursor to the covid outbreak that's why the mothman was being seen there i've heard of the the lot of the violence on the south side of chicago you know there's mm-hmm. a lot of shootings there on a daily basis i mean they call it chirac for a reason like that's why it's there it's mm-hmm. wherever there's despair wherever there's problems this mothman like entity reveals itself i mean it could be happening in other places of the world that we're just not reported on right so maybe maybe that's what it is. I, I don't know, but it, it's all walks of life have reported this thing from old ladies that are shopping to, you know, uh, directors at the airport to police officers to recently I've saw on your website, firemen. My mm-hmm. brother's a fireman. Several firemen have reported seeing this thing more than once. Right. It's uh, crazy. Flying, yeah. 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 You know, we had the first fireman come forward to Manuel and, um, uh, when, when he started talking to this guy, he was telling him, yeah, I mean, this isn't the first time. We've got firemen all over the airport. They've got five stations uh, of Chicago City Fire Department at O'Hara. And uh, apparently they all talk about it among each other. So, of course, everybody knows about the O'Hara Batman. That's what they call him. So, um, and of course... Even the people who work the terminal and people that are security and air traffic and pilots and they all know about it. So uh, yeah, it's um, you know, it, I like I told you guys earlier in in October 2019 when the sighting, you know, we got the first sighting at O'Hare. It was attacked one of those taxi drivers that was picking people up. And they used to stage outside the airport property until they'd get a call. And of course, they'd go to the terminal and pick people up. And that's where the first sighting happened, right there beside this guy's car. It wasn't a cab; it was like an Uber. And uh, he's the he's the first one. And boy, since then, I'd say 80, 85 percent of the sightings that we get not now and since then have been from O'Hare. Yeah, it's bizarre. You know, there are other other regions of the world where, like, I, I comes to mind is like Mexico. In Mexico City in particular, there's a lot. But there they call them witches, right? These right. flying humanoids, they call them witches. But the descriptions are fairly similar. Uh, a winged human. Uh, they mention the glowing eyes. They mention the ominous feeling and, and just seeing it. Uh, there are some videos you can look at on YouTube of various flying humanoids or witches. But, you know, it makes you wonder, like, for the same reasons that is happening in the South side of Chicago is this moth man. Other people call it the owl man, which mm-hmm. is whatever the name is it drawn to. Yeah. There you go. There's a picture. 
Is it drawn to Mexico City because of a lot of the violence there, you know, with the cartels and things? Like maybe it's drawn and it's like like much like the glimmer mm -hmm. man, like it's it's a voyeur, like it's watching. Mm -hmm. Now, is, that, is it a demon? Is it an ultra terrestrial? Uh, is it an extraterrestrial? Is it something that's just intrigued by mankind? Like, what are these people doing? You know, it's it's just generally interested. It's not there to cause harm. We're just terrified because of stories like of the Mothman, you know. Yeah. I don't know, but it's but yeah, there's another great image. There's all kinds of images I've seen, and some of them are different. Some of them that one looks like it has wings. I've seen somewhere it looks like it's a guy with a jet pack. You know, you've seen the guys with those, but a lot of the sightings in and around O'Hare. In particular, they don't have they don't mention any sounds of like a jetpack or nothing like that. Most of the time they just if there is any to sound described, it's the sound of flapping wings or leathery flapping wings, you know. Well, most I'd say 90 percent or 95 percent of the sightings that we have in Chicago, the, the wings are actually seen. Mm. <clears throat> and most of those are bat like wings. Now, I got a report today from from August the Two of twenty two, two thousand twenty two, in um, in Waukegan was just north of Chicago, and I'm going to post that tomorrow. But uh, this was a sighting that four people had, uh, that it did have wings at all, and this thing was seen flying, and it was close enough that they, they could see detail in the body and all. But uh, it, you know, of course, this was something a little bit different than what people have been seeing. So is it all connected? Oh, I believe so, because I, I believe there have been so many different subtle, you know, subtle differences between all these sightings that something's definitely going on. But I think I, I think the origin is the same wherever they're coming from. I think it's the same. Yeah, so I agree. And, and a lot of the sightings, oddly enough, whether they see the wings, the wings aren't ever flapping like they're no. stationary. It's like it's not moving. It's it's what is it gliding? I don't know, but like oddly enough, they don't see it flapping. Well, you know, when I had my encounter back in two in, in 1988 with two other individuals, and we saw a red-eyed being that literally jettisoned itself without the use of its wings, though it had wings. It hmm. didn't unfurl the wings, but it was able to jettison itself quickly into the air without flapping a wing or anything like that. It was just like this thing had the ability to move without the propulsion. So, um, and we get a lot of that in Chicago. I, you know, and this is another thing. I had I had that encounter way back in, you know, in 19, 1988. Was I chosen or was I predisposed to getting these sudden reports out of Chicago because of that? Because what I saw was very similar to what people are describing to me in Chicago. So yeah. I don't know. Was it a precursor? I don't know. You know mark it, in some way. The human yeah. marked you in some form or fashion. Yeah. Yeah. I, I always want to know, like, what is the benefit? What are they benefiting from for being there? Because it, to me, it's one of those things like they have to be feeding off of something. I always bring this up. Is it's because without the interaction, it's almost like they feed off of your fear or your anxiety, whatever your energy that you're putting off is something that they enjoy. They enjoy giving you those glimpses of it, whether it's cortisol spikes, whatever it is, they seem to be enjoying. And so it always makes me wonder when we see these flaps is what's going on there. Mm -hmm. It's affecting everyone there and enough so that more of them show up to feed. It's almost mm -hmm. like feeding seagulls, right? Like you get one or two, but the minute you start feeding, they all show up. That's right. almost what this feels like is that flap has started. And it may be like you're talking about all the stuff that's been going on in and around Chicago, but it's strange that it's flapped over so much. We keep using the word flap with wings. It's hilarious, but it's, it's at the airport. It's just so crazy that it's all in and around this one area is so concentrated and it seems to be more concentrated. Like, as it's trickled down, it's like they've moved to this area. I want to know what what went on there where they built the airport or what's still going on there that could possibly be drawing this in. Well, yeah, that's perhaps. something we've tried to, you know, this is something we've tried to figure out from the very beginning. Uh, of course, even before, before I wrote the first book, and we hadn't been getting sightings at, at the airport, but, of course, since, like I said before, October 2019, we started getting the sightings, and there was definitely a draw to the airport. 
Uh, there is one area of the airport where there is actually a, a cemetery. And uh, there are several uh, carriers that, you know, cargo carriers that are, are there located in that area. That's the uh, southwest side of the airport. And I, I'd say at least 50% of the sightings have been concentrated around that area. And uh, I, I, I believe that the, I believe that that cemetery is a draw. Is there a portal there? Is there something there? I, I think there's something about it. And uh, there's definitely connection. There's there definitely has connection. Be, there has to be something that's, that's yeah. pulling this energy or pulling whatever this is to this spot. They're not just showing up randomly. Otherwise, right. they would be random spots all over the world that would be getting this. Yeah. When I'm, you say 50%. That is a large sum, given the number yeah. of sightings that you've collected since 2011. That is a giant pile of them being concentrated in a very close area. So any yeah. of y'all listening, if you want to go try to see something crazy, go hang out around that area. There's your <laughs> hot spot. You might bump into one. Now you're going to you're gonna do it on your own. You're yeah. going to take it on all in, on your own risk if you go there. I, yeah, you see something crazy coming down there. You don't want that happening. You don't want that flying and landing in the bed of the truck. Like especially that you don't want that landing in the bed of the truck. Yeah. Well, I was not, I was not aware about the the cemetery, the graveyard yeah. being on the uh, grounds of the airport. That that's really interesting. That changes well, a lot in my mind. You know, um, O'Hare, O'Hare used to, for the most part that whole area was old orchards. That's mm. why when you see the the designation of the airport, it's O R D. That's abbreviated for orchards. I got gotcha. you. Oh. So, um, but there were two cemeteries at that location. Now they did move the one they, you know, they dug everything up and moved it. But this particular cemetery, the Rest Haven Cemetery, and it's not big at all. I mean, it, you know, uh, it might be an acre or so, maybe a little more than an acre, but everything was kept there. And we have had a variety of phenomena happen at that at that location. I mean, we've had UFO activity. We've had, yeah. uh, we had a, um, a individual who worked at one of the docks who was out there and saw a egg shaped UFO hovering above the cemetery and some type of humanoid ascended up into it from the cemetery. Uh, a lot of weird stuff. Uh, one of our, one of our investigators, actually got there went there and he has a, he, he's got the ability to get into the airport because of his work so he's got you know he's got permission to be there and he went into the cemetery at night and he had a physical contact with one of these beings mm. so uh i i we do believe that th there is a very important part of this whole story associated with that cemetery and that whole area now is that the original area where they're coming in at? Eh, it could be, but I, of course, we're getting sightings like a 200, 250 mile radius of Chicago. Uh, so there's got to be something else going on here. But the sightings, in, of course, have been very similar. And uh, it just keeps on going. Like I told you guys, it's the crypto that keeps on giving, man. Because, you know, oh, yeah. when you think, when you think it's 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 over, then it starts springing up again. But it always seems to come in waves. And uh, you know, we had had not had a sighting for almost three or four months lately, and all of a sudden we started having people coming forward. So it, it it's I, it's hard to it's hard to understand why it is what it is. But uh, yeah, this whole thing with the firemen, you get one guy talking about it, then all, you know, all the other ones want to talk about it too. So yeah, that's a, people feel okay coming forward. And, the, and like, yeah. you talked about it. how many sightings are there that people haven't come forward? Well, that's just it. You know, of course yeah. we know it's happening. Sure. And, uh, and the powers to be at the airport are trying to keep this thing as quiet as possible. You know, <laughs> all these we've had, a, and I've talked to people at the airport there are people getting picked up and arrested and thrown off the airport all the time. They're coming on there, trying to sneak them on there. that are not, you know, are not supposed to be there. Yeah. And, uh, that's a big problem. 
But uh, yeah, anytime uh, there's a, but in the past year or so, anytime there's a report uh, from a witness who's like a supervisor for one of the carriers or something, especially in the cargo areas, when they call in security, they are there in an instant. And it's, it's either the Chicago O'Hara security that they're private security or it's TSA. Yeah. And um, they don't play. Well, and and like, they don't play. They don't play around. They're not doing this just for fun. Now, more no. than any, how many people are actually looking up? I mean, every all these young people, all they're doing is looking at their phones. So you're looking down all the time. If you just lift your head, how many more sightings would there be? I, I mean, want to know what the pilots have seen. There are, well, when it comes to UFOs and some of the sightings, you can go on YouTube and you can find the the, the radio conversations between the, the flight tower and, and the pilots. Like, did you see that? And they'll have, there's actual recordings I've heard them in like, luggage handlers and stuff they'll come on and be like oh yeah we saw it on runway 17 so, so lots of people have been seeing not just the ufos but the humanoids as well so yeah it was, I yeah. Mean, documented not just on lawn site but in our show it, it's but, nuts i mean i i wish i had a better answer for everybody but you know you know i and the first thing i i hear well why isn't anybody getting a photograph of it well yeah that's a good point but if you're out there not expecting this thing and the phone's in your in your pocket, by the time you grab this thing and try to get a photograph, if you're even thinking about doing that at all, from the yeah. shock, right? That's not hey, the easiest thing in the world to do. Take your phone and take a picture of a commercial airliner in the in the sky at night. Tell me how that works. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean. It's like they're it's great not, for taking pictures from me to you or across the table yeah. or over your food, all of that. But they're not so great. When you're trying to document something at great distance <laughs> in the air at in night, the air. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I still love it. It's still one of my all-time favorite mysteries. Is whenever I'm thinking, I'm always like, "Well, what I'm gonna look at," and I'll go in there and see what Lon's found. I'm like, "Let's see what <laughs> madness yeah. is going on this week up around Chicago." If you can guarantee you'll find something. It's it's the one spot that it truly like. Imagine if they were Bigfoot sightings like this. If there was exactly. one area that you could go and you know how many is going to go on there, imagine the odds of it. That's what's so crazy. Is yeah. I just feel like they have to be feeding off something. Something has to be drawing them there. And it, and it sounds like it's in the cemetery, whether it's the, the burial of an old shaman or an occultist or whatever is out there that's caused this. Who knows? But something is definitely popping off. Well, that's what makes in it, and around there. Makes it so exciting. Is like I said, I've read a ton about different things over the last 20, 30 years researching paranormal stuff, but I've never actually lived through an actual wave. Yeah. So it's kind of cool to be in the middle of it. Well, my niece was a flight attendant and she lived in Wrigleyville for a few years up there. And so I was always asking her about it. Now she never had anything like that, but she did tell me that she had heard people talk about it sure. in and around the airport and all that. Sure. Yeah, and they it, they talk about it all the time. I mean, I I like told you that earlier. Over. I've got a um, I've got a supervisor who works for one of the carriers, and they they tell me what they hear at the terminal, what their employees are telling them, what other other carriers are telling them, but supervisors from other they all know about it. So everyone listening right now, imagine you were at your job, your place of employment, and this was openly discussed like it's been being done now. Like actually taken serious enough to where supervisors are like, hey, something went down last night. This is what you're going to hear. This is what they saw. I just want to bring it out to so everybody's attention. All right. Have a good day today. Boom. And that's <laughs> it. Like if that was, imagine going into any job, any yeah, job. Right. And that's what they were talking about. Oh, by the way, last night, night shift, this is what they saw. Get ready. I mean, and like you said, security shows up. Undoubtedly, this is a very serious topic for all of those involved, not just us looking in on it. Well, I mean, the, the, a lot of these people who have been witnesses have had their jobs threatened. Um, we had an incident where one of the witnesses actually got footage on their cell phone, and they they told them, if you do not hand it over or do not clear it, you're going to be gone. I mean, in no uncertain terms. They tell them. I've had several people who work there who you know have told me the same story and manuel hears it as well i mean he lives there so he's there all the time and he works for a trucking company so he's hearing the stories so um yeah it's crazy I mean, now you guys had you guys had brought up the 
<laughs> the crawler humanoids. Now, I yeah. wrote a book about this, and I honestly, I still don't know what the hell this thing is or what these things are. Um, you know, you brought up a good point. Yeah, a lot of it seemed to start off with the Slender Man phenomena, which was just a meme. Right. But uh, it's before that there have been these these memes of these humanoid beings from a long time ago. And uh, are, are they thought forms? Sure, they could be thought forms. That was that I, I wrote a chapter about thought forms and the possibility. But why all of a sudden are people talking about this? I mean, the encounters, they just continue on and continue on. Uh, you know, I don't know what people are seeing or what people are experiencing, but there's no real rhyme or reason for it. There's no actual... Um, reason to why they're there it, it just seems that they show up for whatever reason yeah uh and i think a lot of people are coming forward now because of the popularity mm -hmm. of podcasts because of the popularity of shows like this on youtube because of your books and things like that people and just the younger generation that people don't feel the ridicule that say our great grandfathers would have felt felt you know my grandfather was a stern man he wouldn't have, he would if he saw something like that he would never tell anybody I mean, you just wouldn't, but nowadays people feel more comfortable sharing. So I think a lot of people are sharing their strange encounters and you're right. I've read all everything about, you know, that this is a new creation that was on creepy pasta and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But there are sightings that go back hundreds of years where it's a description very similar. Now they're not calling it a rake. They're not calling it a pale crawler. They're calling it a golem like creature because that's what they, that's what they associate with because of Tolkien's books and things like that. You know, that's a mm -hmm. description they're giving. And I'm sure before those books, it was given a name of some other name by, you know, wherever it was seen, whether it's in Germany, Hungary, South America, North America, the United Kingdom. I believe that these things have been seen for a long time and that they just went under different names and they seem demonic to me. Now, I don't know. But I know that people, I've read sightings where people had an encounter, they got kind of freaked out, they jumped in their car, they drove off, they thought about it for a little bit, then they decided the next morning or even an hour or two later when they calmed down to go back to where they had the encounter, and then they look and there's no footprints, there's no traces of anything like this happening. Uh, I've seen several pictures off of trail cams of things that, you know, looks like a, what we're calling a pale crawler now, but... I think it's something demonic, but I don't know. And again, it's the same question as we had with the with the the Mothman and the Glimmerman. Are certain people sensitive to seeing these things, or can anybody see them? You know, well, is, I, I you think select? there's something to that. I really do. Mm -hmm. I think there's something to that. And um, you know, the fact that I don't know, you know, it it, it kind of, it gets to the point where it almost all runs together. You know, mm -hmm. you got to, and I I I. I think the one thing that fascinates me about about this phenomena and other other phenomena like the winged humanoids, but there always seems to be a connection with films for mm. whatever reason. Just like with the Glimmer Man, you know, the Predator, uh, the the winged humanoids and Jeepers Creepers, yeah. and you know, there always seems you know, and, and a lot of people. Who, who have these experiences do bring it up. <clears throat> you know, of course, the Slender Man was a meme. Uh, but why all of a sudden are people seeing something very similar to this? Uh, and the first thing you can think about, oh, it's a tulpa, a thought form. It, it's mind manifested, just like a poltergeist. Um, but who knows? Yeah, and I mean, and... Like, I believe the two of those girls convinced another friend of theirs to murder somebody, didn't they? Sure. No, the it was the two Slender girls. Man. Yeah, it was the, up, in, up, in Wisconsin, it was up in Wisconsin. The two girls were into this whole creepy pasta thing with the Slender Man. Yeah. And they convinced themselves that it was real and that uh, they were going to uh, kill this girl for it, you know, for mm -hmm. the Slender Man. And they just went totally nuts on it. And uh, yeah, they almost killed the girl. Yeah. So perhaps it manifested itself to them. And I, sure. They actually carried out a sacrifice to it. You know, if it's is this demon that's feeding off of your soul or energy or something, you know, like that. I mean, it actually succeeded in that circumstance. And like you talk about with 
thought projection and stuff. Maybe the collective thinking and the fear of this has actually created it. You know, it reminds me a lot of like the black eyed kids. Yeah. Same thing. It's the same, same deal. Thing. It almost feels like they are, again, it's they're feeding off of it. It's something that they need to be, their appetites need to be pleased by whatever this energy is. So they will assume whatever it's almost like if you have the, everybody's on the same group thinking, right? You have a hive mind. And if whatever's the, the majority is thinking about is what this thing will manifest it into. Kyle and I discuss this off air all the time about hat man. Why mm -hmm. is this shadow man the exact same thing that everybody sees? It doesn't make sense that there's a shadow with a hat. Why? Mm -hmm. And why is it this certain fedora or this certain style hat? None of that makes sense. But again, it almost is like it preys on the fear. It knows that you don't like it. And you bring up being able to see it. I'm colorblind. So I don't see the world the way other people see the world. Anybody that's colorblind, any, any of that. So it always makes me think that if that little bit can affect, well, there's got to be people that can sense and see other things. We all have that friend. Everybody listening has that friend that's like, man, they always seem to know when I'm going to call or they always seem to know. And if <laughs> yeah. you don't have that friend, you're that friend. Yeah. That's how this is. So we always have that. We both have a very close person in our family that seems to be, I hate to say affliction, but almost with this to where if something weird and strange and unusual is ever going to happen, it happens to them first. They're mm -hmm. the first one that notices, the first one that has something happen to them because they get a response. Whatever this thing is, whatever this energy, good, bad, or indifferent, when it finds something that it can get or someone it can get a response from, it's almost like feeding the stray. The stray then knows, this is where I'm going. This is where I can go now to somewhat milk what I need from this individual and then go on to others and go on to others. When you look at these sightings, I always look at the age for which they're reported. I always go mm. back to like the idea of the Nordics, the, the alien Nordics of the blonde haired, blue eyed, where they don't make sense. They're almost human, but not quite human. Well, there was a window of those reports and then they seem to have fallen off. It's almost like it's morphed or changed into whatever we see now. And it comes in these waves. And to me, it always feels like they're adapting, they're overcoming, they're moving in, whatever it is, whether it gets told that that's an old wives tale or we don't believe in that anymore, whatever it sticks way, it, it almost finds its way to find you. And it just keeps adjusting itself to stay ahead of the curve. Mm -hmm. And I know it doesn't explain all of it because I don't feel that Bigfoot's that way. I, for some reason, right. and again, we tell everybody this all the time. I am a day by day Bigfoot believer. One morning I get up and I'm dead set. It's there. The next morning I get up and I'm like, there is no way that's out there. And that changes every 24 hours because it might be a little bit of something. Yeah. I, I can't shake that off. And I guess we know people that have personally had encounters that we have sat across the table from and spoke to, and I know they believe it. And like we always tell our favorite, my favorite Bigfoot story is about a, a non Bigfoot. It's about what they thought was a Bigfoot, but they believe it. It has the same effect. So it, it Unless I have a sighting myself, and if I do, I'm never going to tell anybody. <laughs> I'm never going to tell a soul if I see any of this. I'm just going to be like, well, I kind of changed my mind. And then that, that's, that'll be the dead giveaway when I'm every when you're day. you're not flip-flopping, like, yeah, when you're just one yeah, way all the time, that'll, that'll be the sure that's sign. That's the giveaway that something happened because we always joke, I'll go hunt Bigfoot, but I won't go hunt ghosts. Because Bigfoot <laughs> can't attach itself to you or hide in the back of your truck, right? But something with evil, this hat man, these shadow men, whatever this is, something about it seems to have the ability to connect itself to you or to somebody yeah. or to a place to where these others seem like somewhat natural. And I, I know they're not, but they do seem somewhat natural. And I don't know why that is, but I just, that's the route that I go every time I think of anything like that. And it could be Faye related. Well, and one of my favorite stories I ever received here at the show from a listener regarding the like hat man and the rake and stuff is this person. I don't remember his name. I think it was anonymous anyways, but several years ago he started having trouble in his marriage and he began to drink and started getting addicted to pain pills. I think he hurt his back at work, you know, and was given a prescription like normal, but then it just got out of hand and his life was like spiraling out of control. And that's when he started having these encounters with the hat man. And he actually saw a rake 
more than once in his home. Mm. And, you know, and he was plagued by this thing for about two years. Uh, he would see it, you know, just randomly, sometimes in the hallway. One time, I think it was in his kitchen. Anyways, slowly, he, you know, he was eventually divorced and eventually he was able to clean his life up. He found God, joined a church, uh, went to rehab and kicked all his addictions. And now he's, you know, 100% better. But once he did that, he never had an encounter again. Mm. He never saw a crawler again. He never had a visit from the hat man. So it makes you wonder, too, is do these things not only attack or attach themselves to people who are sensitive, but it depends on your state of mind and your spirit, like how you are spiritually. Uh, if you're having a rough time, if you just lost a loved one, you know, are you more sensitive? Can they sense that? And then they, you know, they try to manifest themselves to weaker people because they're not, is someone who's spiritually strong. These things don't have a chance, right? They're not going to be able seems. to sway you. Yeah, like they, like I um, feel it. Somebody that's in despair has a bad addiction problem. The, the, these are these are someone that these things, if they are truly demonic, that's who they're going to select to pick on. Right. Well, I, I think I think a lot of these entities and beings are attracted to dysfunction for the most part. Anyway, yeah, um, perhaps you enjoy. know, you hear people talk about shadow people and those being uh, something other than what a, a normal spirit or earthbound entity would be. Uh, possibly extraterrestrial. They seem to feed off of dysfunction and, and misery and such. And I just don't think it's associated only with, with the, the shadow people. I think, of course, this may be something else. Mm. Again, we're talking about uh, predisposition, people who are, I mean, these things attract to. Yeah. And you know, a, a lot of times when I get witnesses or people I'm working with, who, who do have these encounters, many of them are gifted. Many of them are either impasse or beacons or psychic or, or something that have some type of intuitive gift mm -hmm. uh, that they, 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 you know, to pre, you know, that they're actually uh, attracted to it for that reason. I have the opposite of that. I can't even find my car keys in the morning. Oh, 100%. <laughs> Nothing's ever going to show itself to me. You know, it's funny. Uh, yeah, but it's funny. You know, I think each of us do have to question our sanity sometimes. You know, we wake up. Like you said, you wake up and you're, you got a different position on Bigfoot. I, I, I do it all the time. I, 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 I look at my morning mail and I'm thinking... What in the hell was going? On? How did I get involved with this? What the? What am I doing? Doing this? You know, it just but, brought uh, more questions. That's all it's absolutely. done. Absolutely, it's yeah. just made me crazy. Er, it's all it's done. <laughs> I'm like now, there's it's it just opens a can of worms. But we, we yeah. say that all the time. Like when you start digging into it, you won't find answers. And anybody listening, you won't find answers. All you're gonna do is go deeper and deeper and deeper down that hole till it just makes you crazy. Er. Yeah. Well, and thank, God, thank God, thank God you are cataloging and keeping all these yes. stories because your website is the Mecca for these sightings. Yes. I mean, literally. Uh, yeah. Well, I tell you, it's uh it's a chore sometimes, but, and you know, but you got to wade through all of it. Yep. Uh, you talk about the separating the wheat from the chaff. Well, you know what you, you guys get stuff all the time. Yeah. And uh, I mean, if, if you took everything literal, you would be crazy. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Well, and that's what's so wild is some of the stories that we get, it will be a quick, concise, hey, I just happened to have this little thing happen. And mm -hmm. I went back and it wasn't there, but I know for a fact what I saw. And mm -hmm. it's just those little bitty, it's almost like they were poking to find just a weakness in the armor of whatever these people walked by, whatever they did. And then you find other people that are like, I had this sighting and I didn't think anything of it. And then I couldn't get it out of my mind. And then it started plaguing me. And then the next thing you know is this thing or whatever it is, they've had multiple encounters with it after that. And you brought up the empaths and all that. I, I well, feel like there's something to it. Well, maybe there's that's something to that. Maybe that's literally happening. Maybe these things are poking that's what I think everybody on the planet. Yeah. They're just picking out the ones that really notice it. And that's the ones they mess with. They're tapping me on the left shoulder and, and I'm turning to the right. It's one of those like, <laughs> what? Yeah, that's, yeah, I have no yeah. idea. One could be living in here right now. I wouldn't know it. Well, I'm going to get to some of the questions because they're piling yeah, up. Yeah, so, so. Um, Grandmaster UV, they want to know what you guys think about 
UFOs and how they work, uh, electro, gravito, gravito, or magnetic, kinetic force fields. What are your thoughts on UFOs? Well, having never seen one, I do not know, but uh, some information that was leaked many years ago and is now being leaked again by the government, I'd have to say I would believe what Bob Lazar described. Uh, talking about the the blue like aura that surrounds the craft, it uses a, a rare element, Moscovium, element one fifteen, I believe, maybe the number mm-hmm. of the minerals, definitely Moscovium, uh, and that it uses with no wires somehow a device, and it's anti gravitic, and that's how it moves through space. He even talked about how it would shift and move that way, right? And when you look at the the videos that were released, that's exactly what this thing's doing, and. Back in the day, you know, they tried to discredit Bob. They tried to say he didn't work at Los Alamos and all that. But then, you know, it comes out that he did. He was in the phone book. He, they've talked to several people that knew where he, that worked there with him. So that was, you know, thrown out. He, they tried to say that he didn't go to MIT. He didn't go to Berkeley. But then there's people that said that they would take him and drop him off for school. Uh, whether he <laughs> right. got hired with EG&G, the guy that hired him. Like everything Bob said has now come to light. It was 100% accurate. Even the little bone... Uh, x-raying thing that was allowed to get them into the you know off the janus flights into s s4 like that's been proven so without having ever seen a ufo myself i think that they work anti-gravitically i just have to believe bob i'm gonna defer to bob lazar yeah that's the best (laughs) best way i'm like i'm gonna have to go with what he said it's the reason how it moves the way it does yeah look los angeles i mean the craft looks almost identical Mm -hmm. to the same ones that david fravor and them videotaped with their Fleer pods. I don't even want to get yeah. into that because I'll start having a panic attack talking about those things. That <laughs> uh, let's see here. Vincent wants to know, is there a connection between the UFO sightings over O'Hare and the winged humanoids? Ooh. I, I, I think there is a connection because we had, from what has been described to us, now I'm just going by what people on the team have picked up, is that they're not these winged humanoids are not connected to the UFOs or those beings that are, you know, that are piloting these things. But for whatever reason, they're attracted to these winged humanoids, and they they, they seem to show up after the sightings with these beings. Uh, we had a uh, in particular, we had a um, uh, we had a. Uh, security guard who saw one of these beings in in a in a construction site in the southwest area where they've they been doing construction there for a couple of years now and he went to look and he saw it and then a big v-shaped ufo showed up all of a sudden uh and this thing took off because of this this ufo showing up this craft showing up so i i don't think they're associated with it but I, I think these, I think these crafts show up because of it. I don't know. I don't know what you guys think about that. They might be privy to the idea. I always, I like to think that they are chasing them, like they are out here trying to catch them, trying to do whatever. Like maybe that's what Earth is, right? Is it's yeah. a battleground for all of this stuff, and they're coming <laughs> here to do. I mean, we don't know. I mean, any any theory is good as any, but it does it does seem funny that they seem to show up. After that, I mean, we get reports of them people seeing UFOs around Bigfoot sightings. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing with Bigfoot. Man, there's a lot of that stuff that I personally don't know that they're, I don't believe that they're connected other than they're like us. They want to know. They see it. They go to it. I don't know. Maybe they want to be the only cool guys in the, on the planet, so they want to run all the rest of them off or get them and put them. Maybe they got out of the UFO zoo. I don't know. Right, and that's, that's what they're trying to catch. Yeah. My favorite theory yeah. is that Bigfoot is associated with UFOs, and Dogman is actually Bigfoot's pet. And, like, they just stop here, <laughs> let right. him out yeah. to use the bash, and they, they lose control, and it gets loose. Take him for a walk, and he got loose. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, why not, right? I mean, it's – that's a whole nother thing. You get into the dog man stories. That's a whole yeah. nother can of worms there that I'm like, I don't even know. <laughs> well, I'm working on, I'm working on a cryptic canine book right now. And, yes. um, I mean, it's like, that's a whole different level of craziness because, you know, there's, there's really no rhyme or reason for those things. Um, we've had a lot of sightings here in Pennsylvania. You know, when Butch was around, we used to work on it all the time. He was always on it. And then this year, 
we started getting sightings in the state. We had like six active cases at one time going on. So I don't know. God, it 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 just it just keeps going on and going on, and there's no real ex- explanation, of course. So well, I, I you know I don't know. I, I'm I looking guess, forward to the book. Oh, me too. I'm yeah. looking forward to the book, Lon. Yeah, well, that you know, it's going to take a while. <laughs> you know, I had, I it kind of got delayed because of surgery and a few other things, and uh, I, I'm starting to get back into it. But I, I will, I will get it out sometime this year. Um, Tyson Davis asked, "Could there be a correlation between rising crime in an area and sightings of cryptids?" Well, I think it could be. Um, I think, you know, I, I know what I told you guys about Chicago and people were worried about it and scared. Was there a crime? Was it because of the crime, high crime in Chicago? I don't know. You know, I, I get a lot of people that, that try to connect that, but there just doesn't really seem to be a connection overall to that. I don't know. It what may you guys not be think? the crime in general as it is the suffering. Well, that may be. You know what I'm saying? It's like the suffering of things might be because of where they always see it in and around. I'm curious to see what comes out after the Russian Ukrainian war. If there was any strange sightings of UFOs, if there's any strange sightings of of maybe flying humanoids, anything like that, that was going on that gets reported after all this goes. Well, a few things have been leaking out. Yeah. Because Um, there's always strange sightings of world war one, world war two, Vietnam. There's desert storm. Storm. There's always strange sightings during conflicts of war especially ufo sightings so yeah i'd be very interested to find out what's yeah. going on in the ukraine russian war well i mean until we get actual boots on the ground if we do get boots on the ground in in the ukraine i i or any type of war which i hope we don't but uh then stuff will come out i mean if you yeah. get u.s personnel going in there then stories are going to get out uh but there have been some sightings i mean of some strange things particularly ufo activity yeah so uh and i'm oh, starting to get crime. Right. i'm starting to get bigfoot in crimea too and you know it's nuts yeah um nancy malcolm have have both men been sighted from planes in flight you know so far i don't think i've gotten any of those but who knows that's it yeah uh, I, don't, I don't think i've ever heard of one no i don't think i have either plane. No, not 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 Mothman. They don't fly too high. They're like five hundred footers. Maybe they can't breathe above fourteen thousand feet. I do. Oxygen gets in. They can't breathe up there. Not Mothman, but I do remember the the stories from World War II of several pilots, fighter pilots, and bomb pilots having having not just Foo Fighters but Gremlins on the wings, which inspired the Twilight Zone show and (laughs) and. But like uh, William Shatner, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, first thing right, I think yeah. Of. like, but those story, that story we're is showing from, our age now. <laughs> that story is from an original story that there are yeah people that were claiming that there was these straw cryptid looking fey like duendy creatures tampering with their equipment, and yeah. they would see them on the wings and stuff. But that not, never a Mothman, not in my yeah, I've not heard of one side ass there. Yeah, we, we've gotten pilots who have um, who I've seen them on the tarmac. But uh, as far as actually up in in flight, I I don't know of any. I don't know of any. Uh, Patty Filson, is that a relationship? Yeah, that's my mom. Hi, mom. Oh, okay. <laughs> what about the lights over Stevenson years oh, yeah. ago? Yeah, yeah, it's Stevenville, not Stevenson, but uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, there's a lot of people. That's not that far from here. It's about thirty miles, twenty seven miles from right. where we currently reside. So yeah, back in the day when it happened. Uh, there was a lot of people that I that I knew that didn't see it, but knew the guy that saw it. So it was seen by a couple of people. There's a bunch of stories that was spread around it being flares and all. And it absolutely, when you talk to the people that did report seeing it, it was nothing like what they tried to play it off as. Right. And what's odd is, you know, like it was being followed. Like there's, it fits into the same stuff as like the lights in Arizona. Right. There's the, the Carswell Air Force Base. Base. It falls right there in line with F-16s it. that were, you know, sent out to follow whatever it was and stuff so you know if it was just a commercial plane or something they that would, yeah stevensonville thing has been that's been an enigma to me because i have talked to so many people who have seen those lights mm-hmm. and have seen you know the craft and such and uh 
I, I, I really can't put my thumb on it, but I, I know for a fact something definitely happened out there. And, you know, it, and it went on for so long. Um, yeah, and one of the signings of the thing was massive. Yeah, huge. Yeah. Like f- multiple football fields in length. You know, so People I don't know. forget that Aurora is real close to us, too. And that yeah. was an old UFO sighting, one of the first. Yeah. Where the crash yeah. took place. Mm-hmm. Yeah, people don't realize that that Dallas Fort Worth area and, and the counties around there have had a lot of UFO activity over years. A yeah. lot. Yeah, well, that's um, uh, Fort Worth is where they flew the the wreckage from Roswell to first before it went to Wright mm-hmm. Patterson. Was Fort Worth? Yeah, and you know what, I I have heard I have heard so many stories about. Um, about equipment from Roswell or some of the debris that was picked up at Roswell ended up in Texas, ended up in, in Fort, in the Fort Worth area, in the, in the Dallas area, uh, before it went wherever it went. And I don't, you know, I, I, my dad was in the 509th after, oh, or during Korea. Mm -hmm. This was, this was after Roswell, but he, he was stationed with a lot of guys who were at Roswell. So, you know, over the years, I got to talk to some of these guys at reunions and stuff. And um, something definitely happened. Yeah. It, uh, something definitely happened. But I don't think, you know, everybody tries to associate Roswell in the disposition of everything going to Wright Patterson. I just don't believe that. Right. I, I I believe, and you know, from the evidence that I've gotten over years, it's down at one of the two air bases in Florida, but there is debris and possibly bodies. Uh, I I'm leading toward Eglin Air Force Base near Pensacola. Sure. Yeah. But I definitely don't knows. buy that it was a weather balloon. Oh, it's definitely it definitely wasn't that. It, it, and those guys will much, tell you that. Yeah. You know. Those guys will tell you that. Yeah. Uh, Nancy Malcolm, have there been sightings of elementals where sightings of crawlers, etc., cetera, gathering groups to feed? Hmm. hmm. That's a good question. It is funny elementals. that we don't get a lot of, I don't know that I've ever read a story of, of there being like multiple crawlers sighted together. Like we, we don't get like packs of them. Yeah. Everything seems to be one off. Like all, all of it seems to be solo, which is, I'm not happy yeah. it. I don't want to come and turn into a whole covey of crawlers. I don't need like a half a dozen, two dozen. I don't care. Run it. I don't need that. It always seems to just be one. I only ever had one account, one report from Ontario where there was a farm where multiple crawlers were seen at. Mm. And, but that was it. That's the only one I can even think, remember of being multiples, even more than one. Well, going back to dog, man, we've always talked about that one story of like, there was six or seven in the yard yeah. that moved up around those people's houses. And then you don't, oh, yeah. we don't ever yeah. hear about that either. It's always seems right. to be singles. I guess it could happen. I just, I don't remember reading anywhere where it did. Yeah. Now, multiple mm. Bigfoot seem to be a thing. They seem to be more like family units. If you come across those things like that, but mm-hmm. not crawlers. I don't need, we don't need a pass on the crawlers. <laughs> it's a bad news. <laughs> Those crawlers freak me out. Oh, yes. I mean, it's not cool. Yeah, I, uh, you know, and the more and more I've talked to people about it who have had encounters, it's like, you know, and this all started with with this Penelope sightings that were going on up in the Sierras, and the, um, you know, that started getting out, and then it just seemed like it just spread. It, all of a sudden, people were seeing these things. So, yeah, I, I don't know. Oh, I don't want to disturb. No, I don't. That's definitely something I do not want to witness. No, me neither. I'm out. Me neither. Uh, Mitze, do you think the Chicago Flying Humanoid Flap will be ending in the near time future? You know what? I I keep saying that that you know, it's going to wane. It's it's going to stop eventually, but it just never freaking ends i mean it just keeps on going i don't know what do you guess, guys think about it? everything eventually ends everything yeah. but this i don't want to say this but i'm going to i don't think we've seen the peak of it yet 
I don't think we've seen it spike. I think that I, it is still building and still building because I thought it, it just, was it, I, <laughs> it just doesn't feel like it's letting up. I thought it was going to end when the Cubs won the World Series, but no, they continued. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, he was, he was hoping that that didn't stop. Hey, at least they won. Yeah, that was they're, they're a. Uh, yep. Yeah. That was a that was a misnomer anyway. I mean, yeah. you know, <laughs> who the hell ever thought the Cubs are going to yeah. win a World never Series? Thought, never thought I'd see that. Never thought I'd no. glad I did. <laughs> um. Uh, what do you? This is from AG. What do you guys think of the Jersey Devils, similar to the Mothman? Oh, mm, that's a, what, that's another one. Oh, now that's another one. Like I'm very interested in that because, uh, as you mentioned when, in my bio, my whole family's from New Jersey, and I uh -huh. grew up here. But like, so as a little boy, uh, every time, every year, we know we would go up there to visit relatives, uh, my uncles and stuff. They would always tell me stories of the Jersey Devil, and you know, as most uncles do. They just like to tease you about it. But I have one uncle up there that he believes in it. And he's like, he won't go in the woods by himself without his hunting dogs and stuff like that. Cause he's actually, he's pretty scared of the thing. I don't remember. I'm trying to remember now if he said he heard it one time. I know he never saw it, but something freaked him out in the pine barrens one time when he was hunting. And uh, he definitely believes it. So, but there is, so there is a folklore to the area. Now, of course the stories range from the thing has hooves to the thing has a pig-like snout on it, you know. Other people say it's more bat-like, owl-like. You know, it's depicted as having wings. Other people say it doesn't have wings. I don't know. Uh, I think a lot of the sightings took place, though, in like early 20th century. I don't think that there's been any, like, I haven't seen any recent sightings of the Jersey Devil. Nothing compelling. All the stories were from long ago. Well, I have had some police officers in the area who have seen something. Oh yeah, um, yeah. Um, they can't. Un they don't understand what the hell it is. And if they can't figure it out, I don't know. You know, but apparently there have been there have been some more recent sightings of you oh. know of these things. I you know the whole the whole Jersey Devil thing to me is uh, you know th there's the whole Leeds legend, but. There were sightings of something similar to that down in the eastern shore of Maryland before all that started in New Jersey. And, uh, I mean, I've traced all this back even before the the Leeds legend. Uh, it seemed like something started down there and started moving up toward New Jersey. Now, I, I don't know if there's a connection or not. Uh, when you start talking about the Pine Barrens and all the craziness that happens in the Pine Barrens anyway... Mm -hmm. uh, let alone all the, the mafia bodies that are stuck in there. Yes. But, yes. you know, it's, yes. you know, it, it's, like it's just something out, out about Vegas. the place. Yeah. Huh? What's that? It's like the that whole area in the Pine Barrens is like the deserts outside of Las Vegas. Yeah, well, you don't find them in Vegas. They, <laughs> <laughs> they stick in a hole in Vegas. You don't yeah. find anything. Well, yeah, look at Lake Mead's been drying up. The, Lake Mead, they have, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> Again, more darkness. Whatever it was, it was living in a, in a good spot of darkness. Right. Right. Well, you know, the Sopranos didn't help the whole Pine Barren thing either. True That's story. True. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've got another one. Randy Alexander. Any gargoyle sightings? You know, any gargoyle sightings that I'm getting are associated with the winged humanoid thing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Especially in Chicago, because we've had people... Uh, actually described them as being gargoyle-like. Right, and, again, uh, it's you know, a different name for a similar described creature. You know, sure. they're witches here, they're gargoyles over here, Yeah, they're jeepers creepers over here. You know, they just go by different names, but it's, I mean, I think it's all the same thing. It seems to be in that, yeah, when you look back in history, that's kind of what you have to think is the gargoyles are the, the winged humanoids that we're seeing now. Oh, I, I think so. I, I, I think they're... I, it's like Kyle was discussing. That's the only way that they had to name them, to describe them back then. Yeah, they had to refer to something other than what, you know, it, that happens all the time. Oh, yeah, <clears throat> sure, sure. Um, you know, just so many people are telling me, and, you know, the people on the team who have been investigating this with me, 
we've all had that people say they look like Jeepers Creepers or, you know, that that mm -hmm. thing on, in the movies. And um, even when we had sightings of these things out in the Navajo Reservation, the, the Jeepers Creepers thing came up back then. Uh, we had sightings of winged humanoids down in Pasco County, Florida. We had the three sightings down there around the same time, 2017, uh, Jeepers Creepers. I mean, so people associate these things with something that they're familiar with. And just like with the Predator thing, you know, of course, when they started seeing the Glimmer Man, that's what they associated it with. Yeah, so, right, because that's the only way they had to describe it. You know, absolutely. Well, you can tell someone that they instantly know, hey, have you seen that movie? That's exactly what it looked like. You know, and instead always, of, hey, did you see that carving on top of that church? Well, that's exactly what it looked like. I always think of these like lost and tribes that are in the Congo or in the Amazon. Like maybe they're aware of some of these cryptids. They just don't ever tell anybody because they don't know to tell anybody. Like if Vaughn yeah. was to come visit me in Texas, I know they don't have armadillos in Pennsylvania. So when he came, I'd be like, hey, you want to check out an animal that we see all the time? Here's an armadillo. But if you're an outsider and you visit one of these tribes, they don't know that you don't know what some of these creatures are. So they would never even think to True. tell you that, oh, yeah, there's dinosaurs back there and there's duendes over here. They think here. you've got them at your house. Also. Sure. They would never occur to them to even tell you. So when yeah. an outsider comes in, you know, they give them some free T-shirts, give them some Subway sandwiches, give them a couple of Yankee caps. <laughs> they don't ever. Yeah. It never yeah. dawns them. So maybe these indigenous cultures, people out there in these lost areas of you know, Papua New Guinea and stuff. Maybe they know that, oh yeah, there's a ring pendex still here. And I remember seeing the video a couple years ago where the guy was on like on a scooter and it looked like one ran across the road. Maybe they're there. Yeah. Or yeah, God that was in India. Else. Yeah, that was a story that came out of India where these guys were they, they saw the um the wild man crossing in front of them as they were on their scooters. But you hear about a lot of that. You you do. And uh you're right. You know, you gotta wonder in the deepest part of Africa, what they're seeing and if they're the things that do get leaked out, if they're actually there, mm -hmm. um, yeah. I don't know, you know, you remember that movie baby that was out years ago, uh, about the, the dinosaur that was seen in the Congo or yeah. 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 Um, I guess you got to wonder if, if, if people are actually seeing these things or they, they're so used to them. It's just part of their culture. And then yeah. when you hear about it, it's like, I don't know what the hell they're seeing. Yeah. God knows what else that lives out there that they're aware of that they just never think they to never tell bring anybody. Up. Yeah. 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 Uh, AG wants to know if we ever, you guys or me, ever plan on doing a show on the Jersey Devil? Well, I, I guess I could. A while back. I think we have done one. I mean, we've been doing the show for 10 years. So yeah. uh, you can go back and look at our entire catalog. On you YouTube. could hold a gun on me right now, and I couldn't tell you which episode it was. You no. just have to shoot me. Is there as I think they all run together? They're all one big episode in my mind. <laughs> I get it. I understand. I mean, it's almost like it's an incidental thing. If it, if it pops up in a yeah. uh, if it pops up in a in you know in a show, and we'll talk about it. But it's not necessarily something I really concentrate on the yeah. show. Mm -hmm. I guess I have to find the, the way to do it is I have to find people who are actually. You know, that's part of the real investigation. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the, the thing that's been going on that people have been seeing much more now in the Pine Barrens area has been Bigfoot. And we've gotten a lot of Bigfoot sightings down there. Um, but as far as the Jersey Devil, let's just see something that pops up here and there. People say, oh, you know, well, we saw this, we saw that. And of course, you get a lot of sightings in that, that southern New Jersey area that uh, people say, hey, that. The first thing you see something flying or something that looks like a horse with wings or whatever, you think, well, you know, it's the it's the Jersey Devil. But um, I don't know. I think there's been a lot of misidentification. I think we could easily uh, say it's Mothman by now. We did do the Jersey Devil. We did do a Jersey Devil episode. It appeared on November thirteenth, two thousand sixteen. You can just Google it. <laughs> well, there you go. There it is. So if you want to look, there you go. <laughs> you I, I'll like, think about it. I might. I may do something at one point. Um, uh, Corey Nicklaw, any thoughts not on the not deer like that are possibly skinwalker? You know, that not deer thing just freaks me out. Yeah, that's another one that, yeah, that like, ain't cool. Never really heard about it a couple years ago, and it's like, yeah, now just more and more sightings are being sent to us. 
Well, oh, it, yeah. it seems we to me that. that we've been getting we we first started getting sightings on the Appalachia Trail or up in Appalachia, and um, that's where it seemed to be the nexus of the sightings, mostly down in um, West Virginia, Virginia, South Southwest Virginia, down into the Smokies. We'd get a a, a not deer sighting, but it, it's kind of expanded out since then, and. Uh, we had a, for a while there. I was getting a lot of sightings in Colorado. So yeah, I I don't know what the hell that is. You know, you, you think they, people say, well, it's 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 a diseased deer or something else going on. Could have been a mutation. Well, you know, there's a lot of interbreeding within the deer populations. I mean, there's so many white-tailed deer in particular in this country. It's just nuts. Oh. And um, here in the East Coast, I mean, it's like a plague. Oh yeah, but. You know, with all those deer, you got to figure something weird's going to show up once in a while. So I don't know. Well, seeing how how they react with CWD as compared to whatever tell them what these that is. people it's chronic wasting disease, right? So when you see them, how deer act with CWD as compared to what people report to the not deer, it's not even remotely close to the same thing. No, no, so it's in, different. Yeah, it's very different, and it is again. It's almost like whatever that is is trying to hide from you. What it's doing is to just fool you just enough to where you don't really notice it. But what they don't realize is it instantly stands out. People are so used to seeing deer that what it thinks it's doing, it instantly stands out. People instantly are like, well, its legs shouldn't been like that. I don't know why its head looks like that. Why is its yeah. neck longer? Like none of it makes sense. None of it with a not deer. They are extremely disturbing. Yeah. Extremely <laughs> disturbing. And they seem to be, limited as far as like we don't get I don't, I, there's not a ton of reports of them no there aren't so that's another thing that makes me be like eh, it's even more disturbing because they're few and far between when people see them but they yet they all report seeing the exact same thing well of course we most of the sightings come from hunters i mean they mm -hmm. see these things out there and they're wondering what the hell did i run across uh i i think the thing that freaks them out more than anything is the forward looking eyes yes yeah uh, that would freak me out. Yes. <laughs> Only thing that looks forward is predators, folks. That's it. Forward-looking <laughs> eyes are predators. That's how that works. Everything yeah. on its side is trying to defend itself from predators. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Disco Stu BC, do you think Dogman Bigfoot humanoids are responsible for the majority of missing people reports? Oh, God. That's a whole can of worms there. I don't think we uh, have time to unpack this. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. That's a whole, we go down the missing people hole. That's a whole nother show in itself because that opens up doors to possible time slips, to possible fay, to where they talk about yeah. granite fields and crazy. All of this stuff could go crazy. I mean, we get reports where even in the missing 411 books and whatnot, where they talk about the kids reporting bears carrying them off well bear don't carry things in its hands they carry things in their face so right. they're not going to gather you up and run off with you or the gorilla men took me here or right, yeah. all of these i mean yeah we could go on for hours on just that because that is a huge mystery of where and of course let's not forget accidents happen mother nature sure. is a she is unrelenting. So you make a mistake out there in anywhere in the back country or just anything, you'd be surprised how fast exposure can take you out of the game. Just, you yeah. know, we're not near as tough as we like to believe we are when it comes to being in the wilds. And for whatever reason, like a, they, they, a lot of the adults they find or, I mean, don't find are, are dead, but the children, not so much. I think my favorite stories are not the fact the missing people, but like the children that went missing for a time. They're later found in an area where search and rescue workers already searched numerous times or they're found miles and miles away. Their clothes is put on backwards, inside out, like just their weird. feet are clean, no shoes. Right. Yeah. Like a three year old traveled two miles through two creeks, through a barbed wire fence, and whatever reason they go up in elevation, you know. And when sometimes when they find these adults that are still alive, they're like under a trance. The thing like something put them in a trance. They don't remember what happened to them, you know, and that's just very bizarre, especially for some of these people that are experienced outdoors or outdoorsmen, hunters, hikers, things like that. For them to not know to go down. Everybody knows if you're stuck in the, on a mountain, you go down. That's where the towns are. You don't go up. 
It only gets colder. <clears throat> There's less resources. Not, not a lot of water up there. <laughs> you know, and well, I'm going to just... tell Vincent right now to make a note. Let's do a, a missing 411 show so, or something like it. that. I, I got to do the books something. Were down. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Absolutely. Sure. The I'd love to have down. you guys come on and talk about that. Oh. That'd be great. Uh, you know, I had a big argument with David Pilates about a dozen years ago when he first started coming out with this. And I, I mentioned on my blog about, well, I think maybe Bigfoot may have been part of that. And he jumped all over me about that. But now he's talking about it. <laughs> you, know, <Man. laughs> you know, and it's like, well, you know, why did you give me such a bunch of crap about it back then? But, yeah, you know, I guess maybe... You know, time changes people's minds yeah. to a point. I don't know. Well, I don't I'm pretty know sure before sold. I'm pretty sure before those books started coming out that his project, his website was kind of Bigfoot related. Mm -hmm. It was. Right. It was. So when his books came out, it was just like, Well, why wouldn't I assume that's what you're getting at? Absolutely. I mean, he never really tells you he doesn't give you any answers of what his you know, he gives it kind of leaves it open to interpretation, which I can appreciate, but then you can't yeah. really get mad if somebody thinks that that's what you're implying. Yeah. Because that's definitely what's implied. Well, you know, that's that's him. I mean, you know, he does leave it kind of open-ended, and he always has. And I, I do the same out, thing. I kind of let people do their own interpretation of stuff that I write about or, or report, which I can understand because I, I, I don't want to really pigeonhole myself into a theory for about everything. Yeah. I, you know, I could, but I'm just not going to do that. Uh, and maybe he's the same way. Well, you get so many stories that literally it can change within 24 hours. Sure. That information. I mean, your hard drive is probably physically heavy with the amount of information that's in it. I, I kill a laptop every two years. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, I yeah. do. I literally do. I mean, it's it's like every two years I got to get a new laptop. And it, it's, it's I, I just kill it. I mean, it just dies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Terabytes uh, of information. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, guys, you know, it's great having you back on the show. I, I, I miss talking to y'all. I love having you on. We're going to have to get you on more and more if we can. For sure. Yeah. Uh, we get these, uh, we, we get these round tables, which we do more and more now. I got to bring you in on that as well. Uh, if you can, you know, time, yeah. you know, time permits and such, but, um, how, you know, tell folks how they can get in contact with you, how they can uh, access the podcast and whatever you want to say. Anywhere that y'all want to look and find podcasts, anywhere you get them, you're going to find us. Look up Expanded Perspectives. We're on Spotify, uh, Apple. Everything. Everywhere you can find it, we're on there. We're on YouTube. You can pull us up. We have Instagram, Facebook. We got all the good stuff where you can find us, send us messages. You can email us at expandedperspectives at yahoo.com. You can send any message, any stories that you have, send them in. And I want to take the time, too, to say, everybody listening, any story you have, send them to wait, where's the to this guy. See this guy up here? This is the man that collects the story. This is the man you have to get them to. Make sure Lon has them. He is the collector of the stories that will help us carry this on for generations as it goes. I mean, we, we, Albert Rosales and Lon are the two that yep. I always think of, that those men have the Library of Alexandria of the strange and unusual. <laughs> So whatever you find, whatever's crazy, make sure they get it. You send it to us. I'm going to tell you, honestly, we're going to send it to him anyway. So if you want it, yeah. you can just CC us both together so much easier, however it works. But yes, that's the wow. thing is like, it is the best. We've read it for years and years. I mean, I love it. Love it. Of all the well, stories. I appreciate that's the that, guys. Yeah, I love I've never the been compared to the, the Alexandria. Yeah, that's where it is. Library yeah. Before. yeah, but uh, I, yeah. I do appreciate it. Yeah, we've known each other for quite a while, so uh, yeah, yeah. So, we've talked off hey, air more than we've talked on air. <laughs> I, oh, yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Real. So, um, hey, again, thanks for coming on, and we're gonna we're gonna make this more often. And yeah. Uh, yeah, sure. it, you know, this is a great show, and I know everybody appreciates you coming on and answering questions and such. So, yeah, you know, we get together, us. we always we don't have, and it, there's, I mean, we're going to talk about something. There's there's always <laughs> yeah. so much out there. Roll so, with uh, us, <laughs> absolutely. So, you guys take it easy, have a good weekend or a week and good weekend and forward, and uh, we'll be talking. You thank you so much. Y'all take care. 
So if uh, you have a sighting or encounter report uh, that you'd like to be considered for the personal report show or for the Phantoms of Monsters blog or show, uh, feel free to forward to my email at lawnstricklerfamsandmonsters.com. I want to again thank Kyle Filson and uh, Cam Hale for joining me this evening. It, it was it was a pleasure having them on. And thanks to each and all of you for watching and chatting. Uh, if you did make a donation, it's truly appreciated. Uh, please like, subscribe, and share. So this coming Friday night at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific, we're going to conduct an Aquatic Cryptids Roundtable. And we're going to have four guests. We're going to have Kenny Irish, Ron Murphy, Max Hawthorne, and Steve Calls is going to join us. Uh, I haven't had Steve on the show before. I've known Steve for a long time, but I've never had him on the show. So that, that should be interesting. And stay tuned for uh, Vincent Richardson's V Show here on Fans Monster Radio at 11 p.m. Eastern, 10 p.m. Central. So until we meet again, uh, stay safe and stay healthy. Good night.